Let me tell you a story. A tale. Welcome, you are listening to Ladies Who Genre, a podcast book club for ladies and not ladies who like to genre now and then. I'm your host, Morgan. And I'm your other host, Noelle. So this is not going to be a spoiler-free podcast, so if that is not your jam, please skip this and come back after you've read the book. Trigger warning, in case you need it, there's, you know, a moderate amount of violence in this, but it's not really that bad, and it's all sort of fakey fake. This week, we are discussing Minimum Wage Magic by Rachel Aaron. How are you doing this week, Morgan? What's going on? I'm doing fantastic. I've read a very fun book, which I'm excited to chat with you about. Yeah. I'm like, what book is that? (laughs) What what book? (laughs) I don't know. I I really like this one. I thought it was cute, Uh, which I'm I'm sure we'll get into. Yeah. Otherwise, for those of you who are listening to this who are aware that we also do YouTube stuff, which presumably is a lot of you, but you know, for those of you that aren't familiar, I spent the last week kind of really grinding on getting a video done and it's done and it's published and I'm pleased and so I'm I'm good I'm riding that high of I just finished a thing that I've been working on for like four days really intensely and now I'm just like I don't I don't care what happens in the world everything's great I always feel really good that day that day after I launch (laughs) I'm like yeah I got it done now I can goof oh wait I gotta start another one okay cool (laughs) <laughs> yeah, but I feel like I get at least one day of just like not caring about anything in the world. And that yeah. was today. Yeah, that's awesome. That's great. This is a great day for you. Do, do, do. Also, your hair. It's this vid- This video she's talking about is a hair video in which she makes the cutest little braids and the entire universe is starting to do it. And it's super fun to watch Aww. everyone's pictures come through. I love it. <laughs> it is very sweet seeing people uh, enjoy the video and, and react to it. So that's that's very, very fun. But what have you been up to? How's your week been? Uh, good, better than the little week before, so that's great. I have been working on also a video, but then also, uh, so I'm making a Merida costume, and I have been successfully making mock up this week, and it was fantastic. And yeah, it's always a great feeling. Uh, I'm really excited about my cocktail. Can we talk about cocktails now? Like, I really we could absolutely show me show me your cocktail. Okay. This is going to be an on-screen pour for you, so Morgan can see this, but um, I'll describe it to you. I found this stuff called Empress 1908. It is crafted in collaboration with the iconic Empress Hotel in Victoria, B.C. That is a fucking bl- gorgeous. That is like a purple blue. Oh, my God. I need that bottle. In fact, the deal is I don't consume blue. So my friend got me this because I was like, oh, I like gin and tonic. And so she got me this and she's like, try it. So we're going to try it together. So I'm going to go ahead and pour some of this. There, this, this. There's a reason for this drink today. It's it's a really lovely color, like a, a sheer kind of purple blue. It just, it's really lovely. I feel like if, if magic had a liquid form, this is what that would look like. Oh my God, you're catching on. But get this. I don't know if it's going to do it, but let's try. It changes color when you pour mm. tonic into it because I don't drink blue so it turns pink yeah I, on the screen it. it's kind of orange but I mean either way yeah. it is not blue purple anymore it is no longer blue purple and that means Noelle can drink it and I'm nice. super hyped I was looking for a magic cocktail and I'm like wait a minute I have magic cocktail this is so exciting okay now Come I'm bl- really excited about drinking this <laughs> <laughs> what does it taste like as it turns out gin and tonic, like gin and, gin and tonic. <laughs> <laughs> Tastes I, like it needs more gin. <laughs> I need to make or get one of those one of these days. Uh, I don't know that that's something I've ever tried, but someday. I don't like gin in America. It's it's really weird. Uh, I seem to only like gin and tonics in England. Although this is Canadian gin and it's pretty good. So, so. really quick tangent. Have I ever told you my eating blue stuff story Mm -mm. (laughs) it makes me laugh that you say that because i have a friend who was for a time working as like a custom wedding cake decorator maker person and she had a bride who wanted a blue cake and she advised this bride like that's that's not a great idea because the blue dye is going to it's going to get over everything it's it's just really i can do a very light blue tint like and that'll be okay and the bride was like no 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 it needs to be like dark dark true navy blue like mm. oh god and oh, so god. 
she repeatedly in email form advised her no 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 this is really not a great idea no no but it's not it's bad did it anyway because uh, that's what the bride insisted upon no and then of course all of the wedding pictures from the mm-hmm. the the wedding party after the the reception everybody had blue mouths blue teeth mm-hmm. blue mouths blue lips mm-hmm. Yep. Because blue dye is just so incredibly pervasive. <laughs> yep. And she tried to sue my friend. Oh my god! Oh my god! Seriously, you idiot. right? Oh my god! So uh, you know, fortunately, receipts were kept, and she had all of these emails saying, "I really don't advise this. Don't do this. This is not a good idea. Blue food. Don't recommend." Yeah. And the bride in email insisting, despite the warning. So fortunately. Like it worked out fine, although she left the like caking making business after this because uh uh-uh, uh yeah like, that's too much yeah no I wouldn't do that either. In fact, really, when you're having your wedding cake, there's a reason wedding cakes are white. People like <laughs> it's like don't eat the weird color stuff or go take all your pictures ahead. Of, you know, but people will take pictures later in the evening and everybody will have blue tongues and whatever. But then um, it's funny. I don't know. I guess like I think yeah. if it were my wedding, I'd be like, that's fine. I don't care. <laughs> but yeah. I, I can see how some people, it totally would matter. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. All wow. right. So I have no idea why I don't eat blue food, though. Like, I just I've never eaten blue food. I don't eat blue bubble gum. I don't use blue toothpaste. Like nothing that I consume is blue ever. And I don't actually know why. I just don't do it. And every time I try to have something that's blue, I go, I don't like this. Interesting. Yeah. I eat just about anything and everything. Yep. So I don't know. Blue's blue's fine for me. But drink wise, I have not gone for blue. I have instead gone for Salish Sea Organic Maple Luric. Eh, God damn it. <laughs> you should just leave that in. Salish Sea Organic Maple Liquor. Because Ooh. no liquor, the cure. One of the two. Whatever. You know what I mean? Liquor. I hardly know her. <laughs> <laughs> know her. She's your date. <laughs> this is super inappropriate. It's fine. Everything's fine. Our main character of the story that we will eventually be getting into has this like whole ordeal with pancakes. And so I figured, you know, a nice maple to go with her pancakes seemed apropos. You know what's interesting about that? I literally just now, right before we filmed this, this isn't filming, recorded this, made pancakes for the first time in my life. No. How? How is the first time? I have never made pancakes before. Have you made waffles? Nope. I've always had people make them for me or we went out to breakfast. I I don't understand you as a person anymore. Well, they were really tasty. I got this cool mix at, uh, what is that place called? Cost Plus, you know, where they have all the, the stuff. Yeah, the like big restaurant stuff. Uh, no, they have they have like international food there. So I got like basically French pancake batter. So I made like somewhat thick crepes essentially and they were fantastic and they were super buttery because i cooked them on butter which was the best idea ever and they we just ate them just now and they were delicious and i didn't burn a single one and i feel like a success in life i did i did cook them on my famed crepe pan that i talk about all the time so i I gotta say if you're gonna make crepes do it on a crepe pan so (laughs) yeah they were they were very tasty we also had eggs and bacon you you are living a life that I can only dream of. <laughs> I shouldn't be all fussy that like this is your first time making a thing. Everybody has a first time making a thing. And that's yeah. going to be at different parts of anybody's life. So I take back my in- incredul- incredulity, incredulousness. Yeah. <laughs> you, you know, again, you know what I mean. Yep. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, let, let's get into this book before we get too much into pancakes and blue food. Uh, I got to warn uh, you, I've already had too much of this gin. And so <laughs> this might be a fun one. <laughs> all right. What's our uh, what's our opening line for uh, minimum wage magic? The DFZ, the metropolis formerly known as Detroit, is the world's most magical city with a population of nine million and zero public safety laws. Which nice. I think is super telling of what's going to happen. Yeah. So I, I have a quick question before we go too much further. Did you read the uh, Heart Striker series? No. Oh, okay. So this is very fun. This is one where I've actually read more of the the series, the world, than Noelle has. Uh, because Wait, what? This is a whole thing? I didn't know this was a whole thing. This is a whole thing. So. Oh. 
when you listen to the audiobook, did you catch the bit where the author did a quick author's note, I guess, where she said, hey, this is already in the Heart Striker world, but I am trying to make this book specifically as a super introductory, anybody can jump in into it thing. You know, it, you don't have to have read my previous works to be able to read this. Like, do you remember that statement? Now that you mention it, I do remember it. But until you mentioned it just now, I completely deleted that piece of information <laughs> from my brain. I mean, part of me really, really loves that she did this. I feel like so many authors make huge series, huge bodies of work that are all kind of within one world, and they may or may not follow the same characters. You don't you don't necessarily have to read them in a linear fashion, but they don't necessarily go out of their way to create entry points into this world. And I yeah. love that she specifically said, like, no, 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 it doesn't matter if you've read my other stuff. It's cool. You could totally jump on in right here. Yeah. Can you tell me a little bit about this series now that I read that first one? Just like the 60 second overview? Uh, sure. So the quick, quick, quick overview is we have kind of a a dragon family with the runt of the litter, so to speak, you know, proving himself to be a little bit of a, a failure in the eyes of his dragon mother, who's the, the mother of like a million kids. It, it's a thing. The and, mother of dragons. Uh, <laughs> kind of. Uh-huh. She it is known. He eventually proves himself over the series of like what four or five books. It's a, it's a it's a few, and becomes the peacemaker, which we will oh. see in this book. Okay, like he he ends up being kind of the dragon that is unlike any other dragon. They're supposed to be super ruthless and no nonsense, terrifying everyone around them because they can because they're powerful. Right, and he's kind of the one that says like. Or we could just be decent people. I mean, <laughs> are they people now? No, they're dragons. Right. I mean, that's kind of the point, right? That's what makes it kind of cool and interesting is that he's such a different a different type of dragon. And that's what makes that first series really compelling is that he's he's so unusual for his type. Yeah. So is he the brother of the Korean dragon? Nope. Not related. Oh, weird. Okay. So there's there's actually a lot of dragons then. There's there's whole dragon clans, which is a cool thing. Okay. Um, I'm debating on how much I want to get into that now. You know what? It's fine. Let's go for it. You know how in the world, our world, <laughs> Earth world, mm. we have lots of different dragon myths around the world that we all kind of refer to as dragons? Sure. Particularly the first ones that come to mind are kind of your quintessential European dragon versus Chinese dragon. But yeah. I feel like there's also several like kind of sub niches in different cultures of dragon types. Yeah. This series kind of makes each of those their own clan of dragon. Oh, OK. Yeah. So our main character will find out it has has ties to one of these dragon clans. Right. And this previous series explores the relationships of a different dragon clan, essentially. I see. Okay. Is that book series worth reading? I really, really enjoyed it. Yeah. Okay. I I cool. think that if folks like this book, they'll like that series too. It's, okay. They're both very fun. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. I mean, I like dragons, so I'm ready. All right. So just as a really quick, quick overview of this book, in case it's been a while since you've read it, we have our main character, Opal Younge, who's a kind of magical mage character who just recently got an art history degree like you do i feel you <laughs> that's a mood <laughs> and uh, she's currently working as a cleaner which in this series is kind of i don't know if we have what what's like the modern equivalent of this like a house flipper i guess a little bit yeah so she's so like one of those people that buys um, you know how they have those auctions where they sell like people's storage units? It's like that. Yeah, but for like a whole house. So yeah, if yeah. for some reason someone has just vacated their home without notice, that's basically what she does. She goes in, takes out all of the things of value and sells them at like a good market price and otherwise cleans the place so that it is ready yeah. to be resold. So And she pays cleaner. for this privilege. Yeah, you like, you like bid on really uh like houses that look like they'll have some good stuff. 
Yeah, because you can make a lot of money doing this if you pick a good house. You know, you basically want the smallest house possible that's going to have the most amount of stuff worth money in it because you want to have to clean the least but sell the most. So this is what she's up to, trying to make a living after earning her degree and in theory, probably paying it back. But we also really quickly learn that she's trying to pay back like a mysterious loan shark is kind of the vibe they give you. Yeah. Right? Like, she keeps on making these references to, oh, I've got to pay him back before the month is done. Like, that kind of thing. Yeah. And it's a lot of money. Yeah. It's and like she's 10, feeling the squeeze. She's, yeah. like, she's nearing her deadline and really, like, crap, I like, whatever the next house I get needs to make me the money I need. Because she doesn't have a lot of money to bid with. She doesn't have a lot of time to bid with. And then also she's been having like a down streak for quite some time where she's like not doing as well as she used to. Mm -hmm. And she used to be really good at this and she doesn't understand why all the places she's been have been sucking. Yeah. Yeah. So we find her in horrible circumstances here. And she goes in to buy perhaps her last one and she bids on... The apartment of a gentleman who we will come to find out is a scientist and enters that apartment and finds a dead body. Dun, dun, dun. Which dun, dun, is... dun. <laughs> I like that we have like a dun, dun, dun in almost every episode. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so she figures out, oh, damn it, there's a dead body here, which unfortunately changes the situation. Yeah. Like it means that now, oh, this is the property of a deceased person, which mm -hmm. means that it now goes into their whole like will and it goes to their next living kin and it like there's a whole situation that makes it different than a normal cleaning situation right and it's supposed to be checked for that before they get put up for auction so there is no reason she should have had to deal with this like she's pissed yeah fortunately she kind of ends up smoothing it over questionably <laughs> yeah there's a, there's a potentially illegal transaction that goes down in which she's allowed to take one thing uh, so she she does end up kind of looking over the place and takes, gosh, no, no, okay, before before we get into like plot stuff, okay, because <laughs> I feel like it's so easy to get super blogged down, blogged, bogged, bogged down. I mean, that's the same thing, like when you're stuck <laughs> in like a blog hole and you can't get out, it's like that. <laughs> like I, it's so exciting to try and like recreate the plot in my mind. And I know yeah. that sometimes we kind of get stuck in like a a, a loophole of like, ah, and then the next thing that happens is yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, which is fun for us, but I think not necessarily as fun to listen to. So before we get stuck on that loop. <laughs> which we're calling a blog hole. A blog hole. Very yeah. dangerous. <laughs> so we, we, we have our character. She's doing things. She's trying to figure it out. That's kind of our, our scene that we're yeah. setting for the book. Yeah. Uh, just first off, like, what do you think? Did you have oh, fun reading it? Yeah. So controversially, yes. And also, no. All right. I'll take it. <laughs> I have one massive gripe. Okay. I, oh my God, I like hate this reader. She's like, everybody's voice is just the <laughs> I hate oh, really? this reader. I hate her. I hate the way she does the AI. I hate the way she does any other woman that she's doing. I hate the way she talks as Opal when she's not in... You know how like she has a different voice for her interior thought voice mm -hmm. and her uh, and her exterior voice? When she does her exterior voice, yeah. I want to punch this woman. Like really? I do not want to listen to any other books done by this reader. I hate her. Wow. Okay. Like I have I... told you that I'm very sensitive to this. <laughs> no, that's fair. That's fair. That's very yeah. fair. Like I... I enjoyed the narrator. I've read so many books by lots of different people with all sorts of voices. And so I feel like maybe I'm pretty chill with this sort of thing. But I don't know. I I guess I thought she was fine. But I guess it's it's good for anybody who's thinking about listening to the audiobook version of this. If you're sensitive to like high pitched. Is that, what, is that the issue? It's just like this total valley girl voice. And I am a va valley girl. So I was just baffled by the fact that I hated this. It was just, I hated the way, especially the AI. Like, and the AI talks all the time in this thing. And I just was like, no, stop, just stop. I loved the story though. I thought the story was, the world building was so good. I thought the way that they presented her as like, it's almost noir. 
for yeah. quite some time. It's like Absolutely. it's like um what would I call that? Like urban fantasy noir. Like uh Harry Dresden was like that at the beginning and then changed kind of out of that. But yeah, so I really enjoyed that. I enjoyed all the plot twists because there were plot twists that you were like, Whoa too <laughs> so like there was, there was just a bunch of stuff that i thought was really cool about this book so i really enjoyed it i just like i could not handle the read the reader i was fine for about two-thirds of the book and then about about two-thirds of the way and i was like look <laughs> i need this to get over with I, that's fair i really did like the ai something that's kind of cool about this book is that it has almost a, a like a cyberpunk feel like yeah, there's definitely sure. there's cyborgs like there's there's you know mechanical adaptations that people get to their bodies in order to enhance various abilities there's kind of augmented reality that you can have which our main character does she has kind of like goggles glasses that she puts on in order to have this ai character sybil which I don't know. There's something I love about humanized things. Yeah. <laughs> it just makes me happy. It's cute. It's sweet. So she has Sybil, her AI, who helps her get from point A to point B in the fastest way possible, as well as being able to pull up numbers for her really quick. And, you know, it's just it's what a little bit I imagine the future to be someday. Yeah. It's it's very much like um, having Google at your fingertips, but also... There's a weird component to this AI in which she can like sort of not read her mind, but kind of like she's monitoring her vital signs to be able to tell when Opal gets like nervous or stressed or whatever. And then proactively does stuff to the environment, in fact, that will help Opal to solve her problems. Yeah, it's it's a little bit like when you think to yourself, oh, shit, I need to go check the schedule for tomorrow she pulls up the schedule for tomorrow like it's yeah. it's supposedly it's only surface level thoughts but yeah. i can understand how that's kind of alarming me personally I mean, it was alarming for her <laughs> i'm i'm into my google amazon led future oh yeah for sure <laughs> take over my like a whole business i don't care i've already given up like my computer's full of things who cares it's fine yeah so i look forward to this cyberpunk future but I don't know. I, I wonder if some people read this book and go like, oh, that's horrifying. I think my husband would find it like the worst invas invasion of privacy ever. And I am very much like, oh, my God, you still believe in privacy? That's so cute. Oh, and, yeah. No, <laughs> yeah. bro. No. Yeah. And so I'm like, oh, yeah, sign me up. The second you can stick a chip in my head that lets me just beam the Internet into my brain, yes. I'm into it. I want it. I want it now. I want to never be without Wi-Fi. Yeah. I'm I'm really kind of bummed that uh, what was it the Google Glass that whole project seemed to kind of not go anywhere. I tried those once because really? I yeah. So my company was literally surrounded on all sides by Google. We were called the donut hole. <laughs> um, <laughs> so uh, yeah, we I have a whole bunch of friends who work for Google and they had Google Glass and so I tried them a few times. They are cool. They are not as cool as you'd think they would. Be. Like you know, like you're like oh this is neat. If only it did these five awesome things that were somehow in total recall that I would really like it to be. What I want is like when it looks at you, I want it to say, you know, Morgan Donner, weight, blah, 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 eye color, blah, 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 likes, birthday, dislikes, known enemies. You know, like I want that whole list to just like roll through. It doesn't do that. That's fair. I, I probably weigh... <laughs> Uh, I, I wanted to, I wanted to make a Among Us joke, be like I weigh ninety three pounds, but now I'm second guessing what if that's the correct weight in Among Us. So we're just gonna move on. Anyways, I look forward to our future of being able to see tons of data at like a moment's notice. And I realize yeah. some people find that creeper, creeper, yeah. creepy. But in this book, it is definitely part of the world, which is fun. Yeah. It's it's cool mm -hmm. to read that as like a potential like. This is how the world works. Yeah. I feel like also that's part of like the world building that I really liked about it was that they just took like cyberpunk and very casually stuck it in the world without anybody even blinking about it. It was just like, this is how it is. Like people who have cybernetic uh, hands, arms, chest plates, whatever, like there's one person who doesn't need to eat anymore in this. And that's kind of cool. I'm like, wow, you could just stop having to do that you have to take like nutrient and you know you pour nutrient water into you or whatever but like that's that seems like a lot of time you could free up although i do really enjoy food but that's neither here nor there it the whole world just seemed really awesome with the cool cyber technology 
Uh, like the setting is very fun. Could you imagine Dresden in this setting? Oh my god, Dresden would nuke everything because he his magic just like that is one thing that's very parallel here where they say that the the technology actually like negates the magic. And like there is a the person that she finds in the 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 deceased party has both cybernetic things and is has magic, has magic spells, is a mage. And she can't she's trying to figure out how that exists together because those two things interfere with each other i i think that they kind of imply that the type of spell work that's in involved with this cybernetic hand is sort of simplified because yeah. there's this interference problem but there's right. something kind of cool about that 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 concept that like technology and magic has kind of a natural interference and doesn't work super well with each other i don't yeah. very fun yeah I'm gonna say so the whole the whole plot point of the book so we could just like summarize the entire thing by she needs to find the hand and then the hand has a spell inside right so she's gonna mm-hmm. go do that that's it's the entire driver for the entire book so this book isn't like outlandishly complicated there's not like a lot of political intrigue it is definitely a ya book but it doesn't read like a ya book which is really cool Absolutely. That is literally something that I I wrote in my little notes is that it's absolutely listed and billed as a YA book, but it doesn't, I don't know, it doesn't feel dumbed down, which I can appreciate. I love YA books, maybe because they're a little bit on the simple side, especially when I just want something light and fluffy and, you know, it feels like an adult could totally read it. I mean, I would say two thirds of the books that I <laughs> read are YA books, so I can't really talk. I I think that YA has got a really bad rap, and it doesn't deserve the rap it's got because I think a young adults are actually way smarter and more savvy than people give them credit for, and the writers know that and they write to that. And B, yeah, not everything has to be political intrigue. Like, yeah, some, sometimes it can just be fun, and and if you need a piece of like cotton candy reading why is the way to go this one is definitely that like i i really enjoyed that part of it part of what i love about genre in general is that it tends to kind of be on the cotton candy side not always yeah but i would say as a general rule it is and i that's that's part of what i love and it makes the occasional books that i find that are less cotton candy if we're going to keep using that phrase (laughs) yeah uh it makes them extra like interesting but yeah. not I don't want everything to be that. Like it's it's nice to have these kind of like simple fun stories. Yeah, for sure. Did you have any particular like favorite characters? I mean, I really this is one of the very few times that I really like the main character. Like I was a noble. I thought she was a cool chick and I as the book goes on, you find out motiv- about more about her motivation and why she is the way she is and why she the the debt she's paying off and all that stuff you find out about her family uh so that that is a giant plot twist that happens and you're like what did you did you know that did you call that i called it like not very long before it happened i so no i did not call that it was going to be family they heavily hinted that there was someone that she owed a lot of money to but I, I really didn't have a strong sense of who or what that was going to be until they basically just said straight out, like, oh, it's her father, sort of. Oh, like, I don't mean that. I mean about her dad. Like, did you call that he is a dragon? No. So because I knew that the previous series, the Heart Striker series, was uh-huh. all dragons, I 100% assumed that this was going to be different. No, like oh. hardly any dragons involved. I admit, for like one second, I was disappointed oh. when I when I heard that her father was a dragon, and I was like, "Seriously? Like we had a dragon series, and now we're gonna have a second dragon series in the same well, world?" Well, I mean, it's like, part of the same world, right? Yeah, I don't, there was whatever the reason. There was definitely a moment of like, "Ah, oh, really?" And I, I guess I was hoping that he, that it was going to be some other kind of magical creature or something. Right. You know? Okay. Yeah, I get that. Yeah, for sure. But no, he was a dragon. <laughs> but they very quickly kind of relay the fact that she's not actually his daughter daughter, like genetically. Yeah. Raised by him, but not not actually a dragon. Because I was like, really, we're going to find out the main character is a dragon? I think there is something dragon in her. Because 
I called that it was going to be a dragon when she blew her magic super hard um, in the like hanging town. Oh, there was mm-hmm. the coolest town. I'm just going to go ahead and an- ask, answer a question that Morgan is going to ask me later, which is there anywhere I would like to go? There's this town that is hanging <laughs> from un- underneath the overpass of a bill of a of a freeway and it's all suspended and at some point she blows her magic in this town um and just like she fries herself essentially but everyone around her is like i can't believe you're not dead because that was way too much magic to be having there and i was like oh she's a dragon so i think i i mean i knew like her father was probably going to be one because because she kept talking about that and like she, she kept talking about her 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 dad in a way that was like super feared him and whatever but more so i think i think there is something about him in her because dragons can handle a lot more juice than everybody else can right so and she can handle a lot of juice for a human even a biologically constructed human yeah it's interesting because her dad definitely talks later on about how he wanted to have a mage in the family in his coterie of humans it, like there's this weird pseudo family but not actually family it's more like here's a group of humans that he owns question mark like yeah i, I feel like that's kind of the language that they use yeah it, mm-hmm. i i feel like indentured servants is probably a pretty close approximation if you leave you're gonna die but he's not forcing you to stay <laughs> uh, yeah it's, that's the it, vibe i got <laughs> Whatever it is, it's not good, is uh, definitely what we're told. And he wants a mage. And so he arranges for his, like, favorite human, our main character's mother, to get, like, a, a sperm donation or, or something. Mm-hmm. A, a mating with a, like, high potential mage human in order to have a mage daughter. So that's kind of where our main character's born, which, understandably, is, like, a weird 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 position to be put in as a like place in life like you, you were, were bred. born to do a thing mm-hmm. like that's weird and she's of course a teenager and is like f that i'm out <laughs> and books it so that one like, of the things they, they don't really talk about is that she's korean and she's she came to america from korea to mm-hmm. get away from her dad to go to this college to get the best possible degree she can and like magical arts or whatever and so they they don't really discuss that at all which i think is cool and also a missed opportunity at the same time yeah i mean part of it is because in the first part of this book they're trying to maintain this illusion i guess she has this person that she owes a lot of money to like they're not being a lot of uh forthcoming with details at the beginning yeah. which makes sense like they're, they're trying yeah. to wait for that sweet sweet twist in the story <laughs> i'm sitting here making co- all kinds of faces at you and you're just totally not looking at me it's fantastic no i i see you i'm like <laughs> oh i didn't see that that's fair <laughs> okay oh my god we haven't even discussed nicola yet D- who's that <laughs> what are you talking about who's that <laughs> <laughs> nick <laughs> nick okay I I have this weird like kind of into it but also kind of not sometimes mm-hmm. relationship with any kind of romance in a story but there is something about the slow burn that I am just I'm into. Dude, did you watch Bones? The move? No, not movie. The show? The TV the, show? Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I saw it. That was like seven se- seasons of slow burn. Yeah. And it was good. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> did you oh my sorry it was a, an absolute revelation when i found out that the main actress was related to zoe de chanel oh i could tell immediately because they look exactly the same i for some reason i did not get that it took oh. me it took me a long time and i it was an absolute like mind blowing it trips me out because she's not like that girl at all well she's not like bones at all like she's actually acting and that's kind of awesome I saw her. I saw her at Comic Con because Bones comes to Comic or came to Comic Con when it was on, and I saw her talk, and I was like, "Oh my god, you're not like that!" I totally expected her to be very like stiff and bonesy. She was not. It this is not sense. a Bones podcast, but we could totally do one. Oh, <laughs> oh, there's part of me that wants to do literally a podcast about every single thing I watch. Literally everything. Right? Yeah, All the everything time. you watch, mm-hmm. you have a reaction to yeah. it, so you want to yeah. be like. <gasps> Let me uh-huh. tell you. 
Mm -hmm. yep. like i'm watching both wandavision right now like mm -hmm. oh yeah half mm -hmm. of america and a show that's been on a little while the rookie have you heard of it oh i have heard of it i haven't seen it is it good it's really cute it's got um uh nathan fillion Oh, uh-huh. Being That's Nathan a... Fillion because he doesn't act. He just <laughs> bees Nathan Fillion everywhere. Shh. Shh. <laughs> anyway, I love Nathan Fillion. I do too. But it's a it's a very fun series. And I'm told that it takes a really interesting direction as it goes on. I would love to hear about that. Too bad you don't have a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, Nicola, what do you think of him? Uh, do you think he's Russian? Oh. The, like, the accent on the guy, or like from Belarus or something, the accent on the guy that the, the reader did made me feel like he was a big Russian dude. I mean, now that you say it, I'm like, yeah, sure. But during the actual listening, I did not once think that. So uh, oh. I don't know. I'm a very susceptible to suggestion sort of person. So mm -hmm. maybe now that you said it, I'm like, yeah, he's totally Russian. <laughs> I would like to know a lot more about him because I feel like he was almost a non-entity in the book. Like he was there to be a weird plot point and kind of a, um, what what is that word? A plot device? Like he gave her housing when she needed housing. He was her ride. He made sure she didn't get shot a lot. Like there was a bunch of like things that he did, but he didn't really have that much of a personality. And that, that was his personality that he didn't have a personality and that's intentional, I think. So, yeah. so I, I don't know what I think about Nicola because he was just this big dude who like looked invulnerable and somehow she got under his skin a little bit. And that started, real early and like you said slow burned it was like watching that little mission impossible like trail the like string that they put on the bomb you know but it was really long and they lit the fuse oh, it's called a fuse hi i told you guys i had a gin and tonic right so um <laughs> they lit the fuse and that fuse was a long burn <laughs> but yeah I, I don't i don't know what i think what did you think about him i don't know like you're like now I that you mention it <laughs> I don't know. He he gives off this kind of weird mixture of a little bit in his money. Like he has enough to afford some luxuries as needed. So he's not in quite the rough position that our main protagonist is in. And he's also kind of bidding on competing apartments for for cleaner cleanerdom. Mhm. Mm Cleanering. I don't know. Whatever this percent cleaning. Profession. Yeah, cleaning is the word you're looking for. No, I like cleaner them. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's run with it. Cleaner them's good. There was something really interesting about this whole like, oh, clearly he's like super, almost mob. Do you, yeah. do you, you get what I mean? Like the Russian. There was no. <laughs> okay, all right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he sounds like a Russian. There was no kind of indication that he's part of a wider mob syndicate or, or something in, in, in any way no not really no he didn't no he didn't he just but seemed like he was a thug he has that vibe and so when you mm -hmm. have this thug character kind of caring for this fresh out of high school person who i could totally identify with yeah. i have been fresh out of high school at one point hey like, she had a college degree oh high school i'm oh my god I that thing that comes school. after high school yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Apparently I'm getting a high school and college really confused. Editing um, Morgan is so excited right now. <laughs> no, she's not. Oh my goodness. She's like, you guys are drunk. Film that again. <laughs> <laughs> I promise I'm not as <laughs> I just we should put a preface on the front of this one. Guys, we got real smashed. Sorry. <laughs> Okay. Whatever the case, there is something very interesting about that dynamic of a person who's been out in the workforce and doing the thing, making his livelihood for, I don't know, at least five years versus a person who is very freshly out of the educational system. Like that's an interesting power dynamic that doesn't have as much. I'm not going to say none, but it doesn't have as much of the weird 
oh, what do you call it? I, I mean, power dynamic. It doesn't have as much of that weird like boss versus subordinate or teacher versus student yeah. or yeah. But it has just a little bit of that same flavor. Someone yeah. who knows more and is able to help you through the world because they've experienced more. Yeah. So I think I was sort of disappointed by it in some ways because I feel like I'm not like a person who's like anti-romance and stuff. Like that doesn't bother me normally. I'm like, whatever, this has got to happen eventually. Also, sometimes you like it when people get to, to get together or at least hook up. Um <clears throat> But I do have to say, like, the fact that he's a dude and he has to keep rescuing her sucks. Like, I mean, that could have been handled in such, like, a cooler way because she's, like, the hero of the story, except she needs a dude. And, like, why does why there always have to be a dude? And then also, like, could we have not had a romance? Like, I think that would have been, uh, like, a nice change of scenery for once. Like, because that always – it's just really predictable, I think. That's fair. I don't – I totally – absolutely see your argument and it's a reasonable one there's a part of me that just really enjoyed it yeah i mean i thought it was cute like as an adult looking at that i was like that's awesome the thing i actually thought the most was like oh but this is what they're modeling to to young adults while they're reading this Mm. book and i would actually prefer it if they did this kind of stuff in like adult novels and we could all just be like oh my god how predictable but also yay rather than like oh shit this is what they're modeling to some young woman like you a need rescuing and b there always has to be a romance if there's like a dude helping you out and i'm like eh, i would prefer it if they didn't do that like yeah. it would have just been like it would have been a nice like change of scenery but like i wasn't offended by it i i it, like i said it was predictable so i was just like oh okay this is what's happening again yeah i mean yeah. i guess at the very least if i have to like like, I, I can agree with you that maybe that's not the best thing. Yeah. But at least this type of romance wasn't, oh, they kissed at the end and they ended up together and now they're boyfriend right. and girlfriend. But like, there's something that I really, really like about this version of romance that it isn't necessarily immediately falling into bed with each other. Yeah. I really like that he was at least a decent person. Yeah. Like, yeah. He's a decent dude. Like, he he's, comes off as a thug, but he's not actually a thug. I'm, okay, he's a thug. But he's a really nice thug who, like, cares. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And we, we get some, like, juicy little, like, hints that he's maybe, what was it, a mercenary or something in the past? Yeah. Yeah. Like, he has a past, you find out. And you're like, ooh, what does that mean? Dear Lord, I hope they write another book so they can tell me about this dude's past. Mm. Yeah, that's that's the intent there, which I 100% fell for. I was like, what? It, what? What's that? I'm super nosy, is what I found out. I just want to like nose around in everybody's business. I want to know. I mean, I guess I didn't find that out. I know I've not always known that. <laughs> Everybody yeah, I knows mean, that. So they don't necessarily have a romantic relationship. Like they never kiss. They never mm-hmm. hug. They never nope. anything. It's just it's it's more like that hint of future romance to come which i think i find it very enticing but i can also see how like it's annoying that he's a very capable character who's coming to a rescue and how that's kind of frustrating i i did enjoy the fact that he made her sleep on the cot like that was amazing like he has this (laughs) nice bed in his in his like entirely concrete stoic brutalist apartment (laughs) and he's like there's a cot enjoy and she's like, oh, my God, a cot. Yay, I get to not sleep on this floor. And then she wakes up and she's like, oh, shit, a cot. Ow. <laughs> that was yeah. fantastic. That's Cots so much no better good. than them sleep them sleeping together. That's fa- yeah. I, like, I did like that part. Yeah. I, I, I could totally see another author trying to make them sleep on the same bed, like, innocently, because circumstances have made this required eye roll that you can't see on the podcast. <laughs> I mean, like I said, I like this book. I thought it was really good. I thought the characters were really interesting. Even though that you like, he's a non-entity. He is necessary for the story. He's an interesting dude. He is not who you think he is, for sure. And even though he's there specifically to serve a bunch of purposes, he's he's not unpleasurable to read, which I find like a really good a good writer puts in a person that needs to be there like that without making them just be a robot Mm -hmm. even though he's kind of a robot what do you think of like the whole like ending concept so again this is not a spoiler free podcast we eventually get to the end where we find out the scientist is trying to make these eggs for people to do a thing and Mm -hmm. it's like a whole kind of chicken fighting ring 
a thing. You you just avoided saying cockfighting on our podcast, really? I I did. I'm sorry. <laughs> really? It's, it's cockfighting, people. It's not that kind of cock. It's a bird. It's a chicken. It's okay to say it in that 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 way. She said it. I didn't. Moving on. So many times. <laughs> They end up figuring out a home for all of these creatures that were previously going to be sold into a cockfighting ring. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) And, you know, so that's that's basically how our story ends is they had this really kind of lucrative potential income point that they could have sold on the illicit market for a lot of money. And they instead, because it's like an endangered species, they try and give them a good home where they will be cared for. Like that that's basically how the the book ends, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was it would have been illegal for them to sell them into that and if they had gotten caught, they would have been super screwed. So I don't think that didn't play into that decision, but mm-hmm. mostly it was just the wrong thing to do to like sell these cute little baby chicks. Um their cockatrices, which are magical mm-hmm. creatures, um into cockfighting ring, cockatrice fighting. Um <clears throat> so I feel like that that ending was awesome because it shows you that they're both good people. And then and the thing was, okay, the dude ends up loaning her the money she needed so that she could pay her dad off, who's a dragon, so that he will not come for her until, I guess, next month <laughs> when we have to do this all over again. Yeah, um, next book, whatever. Yeah, and I'm like, dude, you had 10 grand all along. You could have just loaned. What? All right, cool. I mean, but it I mean, makes I, sense that you don't exactly loan ten grand to a person you barely know. Yeah, that's fair. But I mean, they went a really long way before that happened. <laughs> like they got shot at a lot. If I'd gotten shot at that many times, I would have been like, you know what? I have this E Trade account. <laughs> you know, I would have just been like, this is not worth what is going on right now. Like so much sooner than this. So, <clears throat> yeah, I. I feel like it was a great, great way to show who they were. I liked the ending. It also left the storyline as like, not, I'm not an author, but as an author, that leaves the storyline open to more of these books. So that's helpful for your audience with, but we'll also like wrapping this story up nicely in case you just want to park right there. Is there anyone you would like to sit down for tea with? I can't remember her name right this second, but that lady who didn't need to eat anymore. She was like almost oh, full yeah. android, full mm-hmm. cyborg. Not not a hundred percent, but basically. Yeah, that's she true. feels like someone who'd be like, Yeah, here, let me tell you about hmm. literal like my first cybernetic part and why I got it, and then my next one and why I got it. Like she seems like a really cool person to talk to. I totally want to talk to the scientist guy who figured out this spell because he comes back as like a ghost kind of during the whole thing a couple times in a couple mm-hmm. different formats. And like, he seems like I want to know what his plan was. Does he understand this ring of cockfighting that's going to happen? They were going to try to sell the eggs before they the cockatrices all hatched right in front of that was another thing that happened that was kind of crazy like they were standing there they're like we got all these eggs and these eggs are worth so much money oh my god we can sell them because they thought they were unfertilized and then they all started hatching like right i'm like wow that was some timing right there that was like movie level timing anyway i want to know what his plan was like what what was his original like he said that he got on board with that guy who was gonna cockfight fight them um, because he needed the money and whatever, but like, what was his original plan? Why did he want the cockatrice eggs? Is it was it just a money making scheme? Was it like what? And how did they get fertilized? Is another question I have because if cockatrices are super rare and endangered, how did all of those eggs? There was like a like over a hundred. Mm-hmm. How did they all get fertilized? Yeah, I, I mean, have so many questions. They imply that a natural fertilization process for cockatrice cockatrice are super rare hard to happen yeah it's why the creatures are so super 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 rare but the spell somehow pops them into existence i imagine it's a little bit like if you were able to make a spell that literally pops a baby into existence oh you think that the scientist always knew that they would be 
And she just couldn't read that part of the spell because she seemed to know what the spell did. So that's why I want to talk to that guy because I want to know if he knew that they were going to be fertilized or not. Or, and like, what was his game plan in doing all that? Also, he seems really smart. So that just seems like and he also seems to not have any filter at all. And so <laughs> I think that would be an interesting tea date, basically. Yeah, I, he seems like the kind who's really interested in researching how a thing came to be. Like, yeah, but only kind of later on thinking about the moral implications of that. Yeah. Like, yeah, for sure. that's kind of the, the vibe I'm getting from this dude. If you had to give this book a rating, what rating would you give it? I really, really enjoyed this. I don't know. Four? 4.5? Like, I I really, really enjoyed this book. It was fun. Cool. I think I would give the book itself like a four, 4.4, 4, 4.28. Giving this narrator like a two. <laughs> wah, wah. Not my jam. And I know that if I want to listen to more of these, I have to listen to her. And that annoys me. She's not as bad as the guy who reads the first book of Game of Thrones. So I guess there's that. Worth a reread? Yes, I think so. There are enough like little twists and turns that it would be kind of fun to reread this knowing from the beginning some of those those little details. Because I feel like you pick up more, right? You pick up little details that you wouldn't have picked up previously. So, yeah, yeah, I'll go for it. Worth a reread. Cool. Would you recommend it to a friend? Yeah. It's it's super cute. I think it's very accessible. You don't need to know anything about the story or the world ahead of time. You could jump on in. And I I love that in a book. Yeah, for sure. Would you or will you read the books in the series that exist? Because they do. Yeah. I think I would love to read more about Opal and what sort of stuff she needs to go into in order to escape her father's grasp. Having read the previous books, the Heart Striker series, it's it's really interesting how it goes from like a small problem to a progressively bigger and bigger world problem. Uh huh. Like the Dresden Files. W- yes. Yeah. Very big, though. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. world ending big, which oh, I guess okay. Dresden is approaching that level. But, it, oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Whatever. All the same. Yes. Mm-hmm. I feel like it'd be interesting to see if this book series follows that same formula. Are you ready for speed round? Yeah, let's go for it. If this book were a breakfast meal, what kind of breakfast meal would it be? Oh, my God. Um, I told you I was getting desperate with these questions, right? (laughs) Something from Taco Bell. I feel like something crunchy and wrapped and fast Uh feels like it would vibe so well with the story. Like a breakfast burrito, but with like hash brown potatoes that are crunchy in it. Yeah. Like what what is that thing that has six sides? It's like a tortilla. They're folded in six ways. Oh, yeah. Uh Uh-huh. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's yeah. so good, but pretend it's potatoes and bacon. Yeah. Yeah. I I, I really want that now. I'm very <laughs> upset that that doesn't exist right now. <laughs> Crap. Okay. If you were to get a prosthetic enhancement, what would you get? Oh, th- I feel like this inquires a level of intense thought that I have not yet devoted to this topic. It's called speed round, though. <laughs> uh, th- okay. That's fair. That's fair. That's fair. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> I feel like if I could have like a prosthetic eye, one oh, that uh-huh. like the Google Glass that we kind of discussed earlier, mm-hmm. sees things and relays information kind of directly to my brain relating to whatever it is that I'm looking at. Right. Honestly, I think that'd be the coolest. And yeah. I could have like a mad eye moody weird eye. <laughs> yeah, you could. It'd be cool to see in other spectrums. If you could have any voice for your AI, who would you choose? Oh, my God. Right? Part of me wants to go Alan Rickman because sexy. Uh huh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Part of me also wants to go Benedict Cumberbatch as Sherlock. Uh huh. Because also sexy. Apparently, mm-hmm. that's where my brain's at. She's at the level of maple liquor where she just wants some sexy. I think I would go either Stephen Fry or Neil Gaiman because those are the two mm-hmm. voices that make me the most chill. Like, I listen to books by both of them a lot, and those are the voices that I just love the most. Yeah, but Benedict Cumberbatch is, like, right up in there, too. That Did be... you watch his video about, like, accepting Christmas gifts? No. Oh, what okay. Happens? This was about maybe two years ago uh-huh. where he did a video about how to, like, graciously and enthusiastically accept gifts on Christmas that are kind of shit. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm going to go find that video. It's fantastic. It's on YouTube. It's great. Wait, can we link to things in our show notes? Oh, maybe. If we maybe can, we should try that. we'll add that. Yeah, if we can if we can link, we will. Actually, I'm I'm just saying that because Morgan does that and I just volunteered her to do that. <laughs> I'll either figure it out or it won't happen. Okay, that sounds great. That sounds like uh two of the two possibilities, so that's that's fantastic. <laughs> If you could change anything about this book, what would it be? I feel like if I could change one thing, it would be that her father wasn't a dragon. Oh, okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. I wish that he was a phoenix or some other magical creature like... A cockatrice. Dun, dun, dun. so interesting. Right? But the idea that he's a dragon in a series where I've already read about a bunch of dragons and their power and influence over the world... I don't know. There, it would have been nice if it was something different, but yeah. that, that's that's like a really low level complaint. Okay, three words to describe this book: can't use magic, cyberpunk. Yep, pancakes. Mm. What's a word for a city? Metropolis. Yes. So we don't really talk about it a lot, but it's actually really fun how much the city itself is its own character. And yeah. if you read the the other books in this series Mm -hmm. the whole concept that algonquin the the spirit of the city that she's currently living in is such a character with her own drive and motivations yeah for sure it's really cool yeah although she's she's built out of the manifestations of what people expect from the city though so in some ways she does care what they need. Like she provides them mini- municipal services that are definitely necessary to keep the people in her city alive because I think their hopes and dreams for her are actually the thing that is her. Mm-hmm. Like they power her. And so I feel like she does want to like make sure that they're okay, but she's willing to move your apartment while you're in it. <laughs> so and not give a fuck about it. Yeah. Yeah. Like you may move across town while you're sleeping and not really know it for those of you who read the iron Dru- druid series there are manifestations of the places that the druids go to also and they it's a very like similar vibe to that um although this one seems more active than than most of those for sure hey morgan yes I'm- what are we reading next we are reading shadow and bone yeah, so uh, apparently Netflix is making this into a series, and we decided we wanted to read this to check it out and read the book before we watch the series. Everyone that I spoke to yesterday about this was cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs about this book. So I was like, all right, we were going to read something different. We're switching and doing this. So that's fantastic. I'm super hyped. Nice. It's fun. Have you read anything by this author, the series, anything? Nope have no clue me neither it'll be fun to have a series where we're both going in like 100 percent blind yeah literally cat like freaked out at me yesterday and was like read this and i was like okay 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 i'll see if i can get morgan to read it i'm not allowed to read books without morgan so i gotta find out <laughs> <laughs> all right kids it's uh homework time as usual please rate this book on your purchase platform rate this podcast on the listening platform that you are listening to it on and follow us on instagram at ladies who genre all one word a chair.